What is up YouTube, and welcome back to another one of my tier list for Epic 7. Now, as you guys can actually see on your screen here, we're going to be talking about the first Moonlight Blessing, mostly because we have a lot of changes to units, a lot of units have either gotten buffed, or have fallen into the meta, or fallen out of the meta, etc. So we're basically going to be making this short video, just talking briefly about all of these units, and why they're in their own respective tier. Now, as you guys can see, there is going to be four tiers. We have the S tier, which is home to three units. All of them are very, very powerful right now. We have the A tier, which is actually empty because I think the gap between the three units at the top and the three units at the bottom is just that large. Then we have the B tier units, and then we have the C tier. So the S tier, most of the units you'll use in a lot of areas of content, very powerful for PvE and PvP, um, except maybe one of them. For the A tier, it's not applicable because nothing's in there. And then for the B tier, we have these units pretty niche, not really that great anymore. They were pretty decent in the past, but now they've just been power crept and are just not that great in um, the meta. Uh, they might have some uses, and we'll talk about that. And then for the C tier, this unit needs a significant buff because, yeah, she is just very bad, and we'll actually talk about why. So looking at the S tier first, so we have Spectre Tenebria, Martial Artist Ken, and Dark Corvus. Now you guys are probably wondering why Martial Artist Ken and Dark Corvus are in this tier. Wasn't Spectre Terminia like the GOAT, the best option of the 6 by far? The thing is, the meta has definitely changed because of new units that have released. So, actually if you look at a unit such as like Navy Captain Landy, if you guys have never played against Navy Captain Landy, this unit here, she is extremely, extremely powerful in the meta, she does a ton of AoE damage, and AoE damage just counters Spectre Terminia. Another unit that is picked more frequently after her buffs is Lionheart Sermia, who is very popular because of a lot of dual attacks and extra attacks in the game now, especially with Navy Captain Landy's release. And because of that, she just makes Spectre Tenebria a lot weaker because Lionheart Sermia can literally one-shot Spectre Tenebria with just one S3. We look at another unit here that just got released, Abyssal Euphine. Ton of AoE damage on her S1 and her S3, which makes it so that she is just very good against S10A. And you kind of see what I'm saying here, like a lot of AoE just kind of destroys Spectre Tenebria. We also have something like Bellion, who's just a very good counter against her in general. Also like Briar Witch Asaria, who's very common now. She is a very powerful pick in the Spectre Tenebria as well, because if that defense break lands, she's in trouble. We also have Lone Crescent Bologna, who's very popular now with Navy Captain Landy in the game, and she does a ton of AoE damage. And even Last Rider Crow, a knight now, can actually deal with S10A just by himself, which makes him very, very powerful into you know that unit. So because of this, you know even though Spectre Tenebria has a ton of these counters for PvP, in PvE she's still by far the best. Her poison is extremely good for Abyss. Her poison is just good for raid as well for a lot of bosses. Her safety on her S2 is very strong, so she's still going to be S tier. But what I'm trying to say that is she now shares the tier with two other units because these units got buffed very, very hard with just the changes to the meta. So Martial Artist Ken and Dark Corvus, they're both similar in that they are dark bruisers or tanks. And they both are very good against Navy Captain Landy because on Guild Wars defense, they actually will hit the Martial Artist Ken and Dark Corvus, which will make Ken counter or make Dark Corvus actually reset his S3. And Ken always crits on his counters, which makes him very good at the Navy Captain Landy. So any Navy Captain Landy defenses out there, which there are a ton of, you can bring either, either of these units and they're very powerful. Also on defense teams, Martial Artist Ken is very powerful. He's one of the best defense team units now because of how strong his counterattacks are. So in Guild Wars Defense, a lot of the times you'll see him paired with like an Ocean Breeze Luka, and he is just extremely strong. On the flip side of that, Dark Corvus is extremely powerful into the current meta of Guild Wars Offense Units, um, or Guild Wars Defense Units, because he's so powerful on offense, and he's just, like I said, good into Navy Captain Landy, and with Asaria and a Soul Weaver, he can pretty much take down any defense team in the game, which is why I'm gonna put him in the S tier, because I think I've kind of underrated him in the past, but I've been seeing more and more Dark Corvuses in Guild Wars Offense just because uh, the current meta is just super good for him in Guild Wars Offense. It's basically a free win, and even in Arena, he can be a free win. Also, both of these units are pretty decently picked in RTA, especially into Navy Captain Landy comps or low damage comps, so they've been seeing a lot more play, especially Martial Artist Ken after his buff, and even Dark Corvus with how the meta has especially slowed down. So yeah, these are the S tier units. I think they're pretty similar now. I think S10A still edges them out by a little bit, especially for newer players because of the PvE aspect. But Martial Artist Ken and Dark Corvus um, are still very good. I honestly think that Martial Artist Ken gets more play in PvP now, especially in Guild Wars Offense, um, over Spectre Tenebria, and even in RTA, it's very hard to draft S10 nowadays, so I've been seeing more M uh, Martial Artist Kens uh, than actually Spectre Tenebrias for the most part, so yeah. 
Now talking about the B tier, because like I said, uh, the B tier and C tier units, they're just way, way below um, S10A, MA Ken, and Dark Corvus. Uh, first we have Ruel. So Ruel is a very good Soul Weaver. Um, she is good because in slow games, she can use that revive. The only thing is, before she actually revives, she kind of does nothing and her cooldowns are very long. Also, her base stats are pretty weak. And for Guild Wars offense, you don't really use her as much anymore because we have a new light Soul Weaver that is extremely powerful in Doris. So Doris is the best dark bait in the game because when she gets hit she'll be CR pushing and healing so she's just extremely powerful. So for Guild Wars offense if you're fighting a dark team or like an APOC Ravi, instead of bringing Ruel now it's better to bring dark, um, Doris because your runs will be faster, your kills will be faster and uh, she's just more safe and she's more tankier and she just cycles faster. Now Ruel can still fit that slot but not really a point to use her because yeah Doris doesn't require molas whereas Ruel does and with the recent release of a ton of new units and limited units and collabs uh, you definitely want to save your molas now, so I think Ruel is definitely going to be better than, or not better, worse than Doris. So for that reason, she's in the B tier. There's just a ton of units that do what she does, but better. And Revive is just not that strong anymore because there's so many counters to Revive now. The biggest one being Briar, which is Aria, who's running around. On that note, that also is why Arbiter Village is pretty bad. So Revive is just terrible because, yeah, Briar, which is Aria, extremely, extremely powerful ML5 star unit. You guys, I already showed you guys, but... She has a passive ability which makes it so that units cannot be revived when she's alive and she has immortality and she has stealth with guiding light making it so that her passive is in effect for a while so that makes it so that arbiter villager just dies outright to cleave against briar witch's area um, and he is just super squishy even if you build him on a tanky build nowadays people have good enough gear where they can actually still kill dgen arby's or tank arby's and yeah, just not good in the meta. In PvE, he's okay. You can use, that, use him as like an AoE damage healer, but Spectre of Nivria is just better in that regard because yeah, she's just way safer, does more damage, and has poisons for like Abyss and some other areas of content like that. Now at the bottom in the C tier, we have Judge Kisei. Judge Kisei is just the weird unit. She wants a ton of damage, she wants effectiveness, and then she also wants to be fast. Uh, so it's kind of weird to actually use her, but she's. I guess okay in terms of design, so that's like the best thing she's got for her. But she definitely needs some help in a buff. I think um, they need to like give her like extra speed or maybe like an exclusive equipment to make her faster or just like more effectiveness built into her kit. It's just like she just needs to do so many things, but there's just units that do what she does better and are just way more specialized, so there's no real reason to pick her. Um, she used to be one of the best cleavers in the game, but just not so much anymore. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this Moonlight Blessing tier list. I highly recommend picking one of the S tier units. Uh, they're way better. Um, picking a B or C tier, you know, you can do it if you're really into their kit or their uh, design or how they play. But picking an S tier unit will just make your account progression so much easier because Spectre Scenaria, very good for PvE. You'll, you'll use her forever in PvE. PvP, she's still very good, just not as good as before. Don't take what I said like wrong. Uh, she's still very good in PvP. Martial Artist can. One of the best defense units in the game right now, very good in Guild Wars offense, and decent in RTA. And then Dark Corvus, literally the best Guild Wars offense unit in the game, so yeah. Um, picking good Guild Wars offense units will net you a lot of free Mystic Medals in the future, because you'll be able to win more Guild Wars. And yeah, just good to have a very powerful unit, so definitely recommend, for now, picking one of these units in the S tier for the current meta. If the meta changes for the Moonlight Blessing, I will definitely update this tier list, but for now, you can kind of trust me. If you guys disagree with me, let me know in the comments down below, and actually comment what you guys actually chose from your Moonlight Blessing. I know in the past, I actually chose S10A, and I'm kind of glad that I did, um, but I'm kind of hoping, I kind of wish that I picked a Martial Artist Ken, because I ended up picking a dupe of S10A anyways. That being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.